updates on African news television, reaching you from the nation's commercial capital, Lagos, Nigeria. My name is Deborah Eze. Many thanks for joining me. We we'll begin from Nigeria, where the Independence National Electric Commission, INEC, will now spend not less than 239.2 billion naira on procuring voting materials and vehicles that will be used in the 2023 general elections. This is according to the 2023 general elections project plan that was launched by INEC in Abuja on Thursday. The commission stated that 239.2 billion naira, which constitutes 78.44% of its 305 billion naira budget, will be spent on 10 critical items, which include ballot papers, operational vehicles, ballot boxes, allowances of hard work workers, printing of resource sheets, logistics, and procurement of accreditation devices. Also included in the 239.2 billion naira budget is the 27.1 billion naira set aside by the Commission for possible runoff elections, including the one for the presidential poll. Meanwhile, the Commission on Thursday said that no amount of security challenges will stop the conduct of the 2023 general election. The chairman of INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakubo, stated this during the public presentation of the 2022 to 2026 strategic plan and the 2023 election project plan in Abuja. Yakubu's assurance came barely days after Elder Statesman Chief Affair Babalola San called on the country to set up an interim national government next year instead of holding an election. He proposed that the interim government would birth a new constitution after which elections would take place. And moving on, rising from a four-hour National Security Council meeting yesterday, President Mohammed Buhari once again issued fresh directive to security agencies to rescue all those in captivity across the country and advance the acquisition of intelligence. The National Security Advisor, Babagana Munugono, disclosed this to State House correspondents after the first council meeting of the year chaired by President Buhari. He said the president was not happy with the prevailing security situation and has remained a very sad man following deteriorating security in the land on account of the failure of the military and other agencies to tame the menace. The NSA criticized the Kaduna state governor, Nashri Herufai, over his comments on security, saying that the governor's comments could compromise security. He criticized Herufai for being a loudmouth, adding that it could indirectly help terrorists re strategize and in turn endanger those in captivity. He said this while responding to a question that claimed the military failed to ask despite intelligence reports made available to them early enough on the hideouts of bandits and planned attacks. And still in Nigeria, Kogi State's government has confirmed 41 laser fever cases and seven deaths in the state since January. This was contained in a statement issued by Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Health, Mr. Daniel Alunge in Lokoja. The statement added that Iba, Ibaji, Lokoja, Ajaokuta, Ofu, Okene, Okei, Adavi local council reported at least one case during the period under review. Alonga noted that the state's Ministry of Health responded appropriately to the epidemic as a result of Governor Yaya Bello's intervention in the timely release of funds to curb the outbreak. The Ministry of Health has carried out community sensitization in affected local council to enable them to adopt healthy lifestyle by keeping the environment clean, maintaining high standard of personal hygiene, and preventing rats from having access to their foodstuffs at home and in the marketplaces. He also mentioned that the health workers in primary, secondary and tertiary health institutions had been adequately sensitized to have high index of suspicion for early diagnosis and treatment. Away from Nigeria and the DRC, the DRC government has announced an increase in salaries of civil servants and career public officials from the month of April 2020. The 30% increase was made public by Jean Perry Lihau the Deputy Prime Minister in charge of the civil service. According to Li Hao, the government and the civil service syndicates group agreed on a progressive increase that would include the military and police. Another 45% increase is planned for the third quarter of this year. The salary increment is the Congolese government's response to the public outcry and recurrent demand of civil servants concerning the high cost of basic needs touching on their standard of living. A loaf of bread that was selling for 200 Congolese francs a few days ago now cost more than double. But to carry out the salary increment successfully, the Congolese government helps to recover the money wrongly collected by agents known as accumulators who are on several payroll in the various ministries of public administration. Still on the African scene, more than one million children in Ghana, Kenya and Malawi have now received at least one dose of first malaria vaccine. 
data provided by the UN's World Health Organization suggests that the pilot program launched in April 2019 was safe and substantially reduced several cases of the disease. The RTSX vaccine could save lives of 40,000 to 80,000 children per year in sub-Saharan Africa and high-risk areas. The new vaccine works against mosquitoes, born parasites, Plasmodium falciparum, the most deadly parasite worldwide and the most prevalent in Africa. More than 155 million US dollars have been mobilized by the Vaccine Alliance to enable the delivery of this vaccine. Onto the foreign scene, climate change campaigners planned a wave of protests for Earth Day on Friday, pushing demand such as an immediate halt to European imports of Russian oil and gas and an end to building fossil fuel infrastructure. In Europe, activists in Berlin, Warsaw, Brussels and elsewhere were set for rallies outside German government or embassy buildings where they will hand out red-stained rubbles to symbolize blood covering the currency they say is fueling both climate changes and Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The protests aim to amplify demand for climate action on Earth Day when people worldwide celebrate and mobilize in support of protecting the environment. They come three weeks after UN climate scientists reports warned there was little time left for running in greenhouse gas emissions sufficiently to prevent the worst impact of climate change. Moving on, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said on Thursday that Ukraine needs 7 billion US dollars per month to make up for economic losses caused by Russia's invasion of his country. Zelensky, in a virtual address to a World Bank forum, said the global community needed to exclude Russia immediately from its national financial institutions and urge all countries immediately to break up relations with Moscow. He said the Russian blockade of Black Sea ports has blocked Ukrainian exports, impacting world food safety. And still on the foreign scene, Taiwan is developing missiles that can attack enemy air base and bring down cruise missiles and drones that can target their firing locations, according to a report by a military-owned body making the weapons. Taiwan last year approved 240 billion US Taiwan dollar in extra military spending over the next five years, as tensions with China, which claims the island as its own territory, have hit a new high and Chinese military planes have repeatedly flown through Taiwan's air base identification zone. Taiwan last year approved 8.20 billion US dollars in extra military spending over the next five years, as tensions in China which claims the island as its own territory have hit a new high and Chinese military plans have reportedly flown through Taiwan Air Defense Identification Zone. We head to the sports scene now where Manchester United have appointed IX boss Eric Ten Hag as a new manager to replace interim Ralph Ragnick at the end of the season. The 52-year-old has signed a three-year deal with the option of a folder 12 months. He told United website, it is a great honor to be appointed manager of Manchester United and I'm hugely excited by the challenge ahead. Ten Hag is said to have set out his long-term vision to build a successful and exciting team during conversations with United, in which he is also said to have shown enthusiasm for the challenge he now faces at Old Trafford. And finally, the federal government is set to build 150 new shops at the new Luke National Stadium in Surulere, Lagos, as part of the ongoing refurbishing process of the edifice. President Mohamed Buhari is expected to endorse the proposal, which is part of plans to make the complex and befitting sports arena under the new arrangement. Sports Minister Sunday Dari is currently working with the Infrastructure Concession Regulatory Commission to put the stadium to expect the standard. Among other facilities under the new arrangement, the stadium will have a petrol station, banks and other notable essential services when it eventually opens very soon to the public. Dari said it was indeed tough to get all these illegal occupants and structures out of the stadium, adding we were strict with only one mandate to clear out the place because our athletes need the facility to train and keep fit. And that concludes the news updates on African television today. Do ensure to follow all our social media platforms on Jointum, Pangram, Instagram and Facebook in their respective order. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and also visit our website on www.africunia.tv. Once again, I'm Deborah Eze. Have a beautiful weekend.